Hey there everybody, Drake here from AI Foundations. Today I wanna to talk about some of my problems that I have with the AI agent space, the AI space in general, but mainly this is stemming from AI agents because there is some madness going on in the industry right now, like AI agents completely taking over the world pretty much. I mean, you have OpenAI releasing $20,000 um, per month plans for AI agents. It's just going absolutely insane. So. I just want to go over some of my problems in the space and my opinions really don't matter. My opinions hold no more weight over the everyday person who isn't using AI. Um, of course, I watch this stuff a little bit more and I use it every day for hours per day. But these things that I'm going to be covering in this video are just my opinions. And I want to frame this video by saying I don't think my opinions really matter. I just want to start a discussion about this on YouTube and share some of the things that I've been thinking. So hopefully you don't feel trapped, you don't get trapped, and some ways to navigate this time that we're going through. Now, again, I don't think I'm some like cool thought leader in the space either. I don't really care. I'm just sharing exactly what I think, and maybe it'll help somebody. I'm not saying this is the way you have to go. I'm not saying this is the way it should be, the way it is. I'm just going to share my observations. And if it helps you, it helps you. We can talk about it in the comments. Uh, that's what this place is meant to be. So, number one, going all in on the wrong thing. Now, I've made a post about this in my community just today, actually, about how going all in on the wrong thing can seriously leave you behind in this AI revolution. And that's what it is. We are living in a revolution. Everybody, uh, everybody who's in the space knows it, you know, like, we are seeing technological advancements like we've never seen in the past at an exponential rate. And when we look back at this time, if there's ever a time to look back, I'm, I'm almost to the point where everything is advancing so fast that like, will we ever be able to stop and reflect like we have these past technological revolutions? Like, dang, I wish I would have bought Apple back then. You know, I wish I would have bought some Apple stock. You hear everyone say that nowadays. And that's kind of the time that we're living in. We're living in this AI bubble. So. Uh, will the bubble pop that much? I don't know. Are we going to slow down? I don't even know. But going all in on the wrong thing at this time, I think will mess you up. And it's messed me up in the past. I, Like I said, I made a post about it. I talked about it. I, at one point in this AI revolution, lost over 80% of my income because I went all in on the wrong thing. Not only did I lose income, but I also wasted a ton of time. And not only that, but, but the worst of them all is I led a ton of people down the wrong path. Like thousands of people I was leading down the wrong path because I was so jaded to new ideas. And I think that's horrible. You know, that's, that's the one that hurts the most. Income, money, whatever. Uh, wasted my time. Okay, there's people going to parties, wasting their time doing that too. Uh, so wasting time, eh, whatever. I was still learning. Um, money, not the biggest problem, but leading people down the wrong path is, is something that I, that I think I regret the most while being so all in on one thing. Now I used to be known as like the chat GPT guy. I have my personas that sold like crazy chat GPT course, you know, which is still valuable, but I was so set in my ways with one application, one protocol, one idea that I was missing out on the actual advancements that were helping. And I didn't practice what I actually teach now, which is developing core concepts, learning pillars, and then taking those core concepts with you as you go. Because once you have like some fundamentals, some evergreen ideas down, it's very hard to lose because things are so natural and, and things, things come a lot easier to you when you have a set of core ideas, principles, and, um, and tools that you can use with other AI applications, platforms, anything that's advancing, you need to develop a set of principles, a set of tools, like core ideas that you take with you. So that's what I teach now, but it wasn't always like that, right? It wasn't always like learning the foundations of AI to set you up for success. It was like, here, learn this one platform and then you're gonna be like a master of AI, which I was just, it, it, I mean, it was only like a year and a half ago, but I mean, it was just, it was a dumb thing to do and a dumb way to lead people. And I've learned from that. But I see the same thing happening with a bunch of creators, especially in the AI agent space right now. And I, I, I mentioned the creators because creators are an important concept when it comes to moving a crowd, you know, and helping people learn. Because creators have something we guess we can call influence now, 
when a creator with a substantial following uploads a piece of content. Usually people who don't have the time to sit there and study all day long in order to be able to upload a piece of content. The people who are actually like out there like working, doing real jobs, who want to implement AI, most people, um, usually they go to these creators in order to learn something. And if these creators, like myself a couple of years ago, are jaded to the idea of learning something new or new platforms or new ideas, then the consumers will also be led in the wrong direction, you know? So I see that happening with a lot of people right now. And something I don't want you to get trapped on is being so set in your ways with one platform or one idea, one concept, just being able to adapt is probably the most important thing from what I've seen. Like the people who have been the most successful have been willing to adapt the most, at least from what I've seen. I talk with people all day about it, you know, AI in general, get on calls. The people who, the people who are willing to adapt and willing to change and aren't married to one platform or one idea are the people that see most success. Now, a lot of people are doing this with their platforms that have tons of course content around, tons of blueprints around, right? They have sunk cost fallacy. They've uploaded hours worth of content on a platform. Their channel grows because of a certain platform. So they don't want to leave it. And they're scared to adapt and change to something that's better. And that's just how it's always going to be. Usually as a creator, you find a niche. Once that one thing works out very well for you, you keep uploading videos, and when you upload videos, people join your community, or they join your course, or they join your group, or they buy your blueprints, and your channel's also growing at the same time. And usually on YouTube, like when you find your niche, when you find your industry that you're helping, you keep tackling that, that niche or industry, because that's what makes you money, that's what grows your channel, and that's great, right? It's from, like a, from a business perspective and like growing through organic content, but it's tough for the consumer because if your channel is based around a certain platform or a certain idea, then it's going to lead the consumer in the wrong way when something better comes around, but you're reliant upon that. So creator, the creator relationship right now to the market, I don't think it's that good because I think that there's a lot of creators stuck in their old ways who are selling old solutions and they're not willing to adapt because that's what, that's what their business is built around. And they're scared actually right now. I think a lot of people are scared right now because of how fast things are advancing. But again, my opinion doesn't matter. I'm just trying to share this so that you don't get trapped under one idea like a lot of these people are. And there's a lot of people who are teaching this stuff who are trapped in their old ways who are scared to change and adapt. Now, I'm not pointing this at any one person, any two people, any three people. I'm just seeing this as a hole in the industry. And I understand because I've went through it, you know, and I've what it led to eventually was me, since I didn't set it up properly, like I said, losing all my income, leading people in the wrong direction, wasting time, falling behind. And obviously that's not good, but I mean, I, I don't really care because I'm young. I, like, to me, it doesn't matter. But that's my number one problem that I'm concerned with people about is not being able to change into a, in, in adapt. And I think it starts with the creators and the, and the platform builders and and everybody who's actually like out there building the AI solutions, the AI consultants, it all starts with them because when your business starts making money, I mean, this is, if we're talking like fundamentally, when your business starts making money, when you're helping a certain people, using a certain platform, solve a certain problem, it's really hard to change that, you know, because that's like your, that's like your living income. But it's a problem for people when they're getting sold old solutions, in my opinion, or lesser or in more inefficient ways of doing things. So you have to look out for people that aren't willing to adapt, that are married to one platform, that their entire business, their entire name of their business is built upon a platform. You have to look out for that. Um, I mean, it's not like it's like a life or death situation. I'm just saying like, you just don't want to fall into an old way of doing something because somebody is, has sunk cost fallacy, right? Um, number one, that, that would be my number one problem with the, with the industry. Uh, number two is... Don't fall into the template handcuff syndrome. There are a lot of people now who, I mean, I've even seen it firsthand who come to me and everybody just wants a template. Everybody wants a quick fix for their, for their problem. They're like, where's the blueprint? Where, where's the template? I just want to download the template and install it. And it's like, that's not really the point of a template, you know? or a blueprint. If we're talking about agents and automations and you know what blueprints and templates are, the quick, easy imports, right? Number one, I will sell, I will sell blueprints. 
uh, because I'm all for selling what people want and giving them what they need when they actually enter our community. Like usually that's the sell is like, hey, we've got all the templates in here. And then when people join, it's like, oh, wait, they show us how to build the templates too. And they show us, they actually get on calls with us and they talk with us for hours and solve our problems. Like I'll sell you what you want, but I'm going to give you what you need. That's my, that's my philosophy. You know, you lure people in with the fish and then you teach them how to construct their own rod and how to actually fish for themselves. I love doing that. That's, that's, that's what I find my, my passion in. But I don't want people, if you're watching this, just don't fall into the template handcuffs. That's what I call it. It's like you're, don't, just don't be reliant on other people building things for you. Don't just be a consumer. Like you can actually like learn how to build this stuff with free content, paid content. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to be a genuine mover in this industry, in this market, then you're going to have to become a builder. You're, you can't rely on templates your entire life for quick fixes. Like you have to be a Swiss army knife. Like I don't really care if you own a blue collar business and you're out there like putting in doors, like removing floors, you know, just putting in new showers, doing whatever, doing roofing, garbage disposal companies. I don't really care what you do, but you're coming to a point in time where you have to be a Swiss army knife. You have to know how to do everything. And that's literally the way it is and the way it will be. Like you have to know everything. You have to kind of be a master of many different things. What is the saying? A jack of all trades, a master of none. I feel like that's kind of the economy that we're, that we're entering in the era that we're entering. I've had multiple eight-figure entrepreneurs join a little community on school.com. Like what? Like eight-figure entrepreneurs are joining, learning how to build automations for their business. Like that's insane to me. Because I would have thought in the beginning, like, oh, they would just hire somebody to go learn and build automations for them. But the most successful people right now are actually learning how to build agents for themselves. And that is a big indication for me. If there's eight-figure entrepreneurs diving in, learning how to build automations for themselves, people who are doing blue-collar things, people who have online internet empires, right? Everyone's learning it. The most successful people are learning it right now. So that tells me, like, don't get lazy. Don't just look for templates, actually learn how to build it and find a spot, find a, find, find a group of people you can talk to about it. That's been the most helpful thing for me is just having people I can speak to about it. When I'm just sitting down in my room, building out agents for hours, there's not many people I can talk to about it, right? I mean, as you probably know, hard to even find people to talk to AI about. If you're watching this video and you're this deep in, like, you understand it's not many people want to talk about it. Maybe on the internet, yeah, but not many people around you. So you need to get around people who are also excited about it in order to help excel your growth. And this is a problem. People, people don't do that. And when people don't do that, they lose authentic interaction. And authentic interaction is literally going to be the only thing standing when all of this is said and done, if it ever is said and done. People are going to be craving that. That is going to be the most valuable resource on earth is interaction with other humans. So Make sure that you're keeping that up as well. Don't just, don't get lost in the sauce because it's easy to, very easy to. My third problem is there's zero originality in the space now. Now I'll admit, you know, I've taken inspiration from other people and I've made it my own and I might've even uploaded a YouTube video about it. But at the end of the day, I'm making it my own. I mean, you'll see how unoriginal the world is when you have two YouTube channels over a hundred thousand subscribers. Um, you know, well, obviously they're not both mine. One of them is my brother and the AI Foundation's co-founder, uh, Carter, otherwise known as Productive Dude. His channel's over 100,000. My channel's almost at a quarter of a million. And you can understand how unoriginal everyone is when you upload a video and three days later, you see the same video, same thumbnail, same automation, same process, basically copy and pasted on another like three or four channels. You know, and we don't care. That's the thing. I don't care. Take my, take my stuff, make a video about it. I could care less. I just feel bad for the consumers who are going to these people, watching their videos, going, oh, this is amazing, and then joining their communities. I'm like, do they even know how this process works? Like, everybody nowadays will create a community and steal templates and sell them in their own. You have to look out. You really do. Um, and like I said, we don't care. We really don't care. We have our mission. We have our people. We have our path. And that's all we're focused on genuinely. But these have been my these have been my main three, you know, my main three problems and things to look out for so that you don't get trapped 
And I got trapped. I get trapped every day in this world as an AI creator, as an AI builder, you know, with shiny object syndrome. And I get married to platforms. I do. And I'm like going all in on certain platforms. And then I have to take a step back and go, is this genuinely what's going to help the world? You know, it all, it really ends up coming down to like a moral, a moral thing, because if I wanted to, for personal gain, sell things and make money, like I, I could easily probably double or triple or four X my income if I didn't have morals. And that's what it kind of comes down to. Like, which side do you want to be on? You know, like which side of this, of this entire which side of this revolution do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the bad side or the good side? It, re it really does come down to that, in my opinion. But this has been a video going over my issues with the space, what I see going on, what to look out for. So hopefully you don't get trapped. Um, but, you know, it's something you have to actively do and actively look out for. So this has been the video. Again, my opinion, not more valuable than anybody else's. I literally am just sharing what I see. I don't think I'm cool. I understand I'm young. I understand that I don't have a college degree. I probably shouldn't even be able to be talking about this. From a lot of people's standpoint, I, I can understand. You're, some people are probably really even angry right now at me. But that is okay. I'm just publicly sharing this video so we can have an open discussion about it. So in the comments, let me know. What do you think? What do you think the biggest problems in the AI space are right now? And how should we tackle them? You know, it's an important thing to look at. And how are you navigating it? How are you navigating the AI world in general? With that being said, that's all I have in this video. Subscribe if you're new. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you did not enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one.